everybody it's crafting journey i'm trying to film this while i still have an ounce of energy in me um yesterday some of you know because you see me in zoom meetings and you play uh, animal crossing with me um i after the live yesterday i just tanked <laughs> i worked um on my job yesterday till 12 31 o'clock ish and then i just crashed i i went into my bedroom and my my whole body just <laughs> had no energy <laughs> none whatsoever this morning but yesterday my head was draining and it was better that if i was laying down i took uh, because of my blood pressure there's i am very limited as to what i could take i did take some claritin and, and then i tried to watch portions of the um defendant's testimony in judge shearing journey uh wesley zachary's testimony or no zachary <laughs> sorry see zachary wester's testimony um that i hadn't watched before fell sound asleep uh so uh yes like my head is just spinning right now i thought let me get up let me get a shower see i don't even have a hat on oh my god so i just wanted to do a couple of things let you know how i'm feeling um i could have phoned this one in today but i i the jury is out on the Zachary Wester trial, and uh, if they happen to come back today, I don't think they will, and I'll tell you later why I think that is. Um, if they happen to come back with a verdict, I will go live, uh, even if it's from my bed. I'll share the video. I'll share my screen with you. We can watch the reading of the verdict live, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a hot minute <laughs> to read that verdict. Okay. I am exactly where I was yesterday. I did absolutely no crafting yesterday. I thought I was going to, like I had the crochet right there with me on the bed when I fell asleep. Every single time I kept falling back asleep. And if I would stand up, as soon as I would stand up, everything would just start draining again. All my sinuses would start draining again. No draining today. I just feel wiped out. So maybe that's what the dogs were trying to signal me yesterday, that you need to rest. Uh, I don't know. So um, let's just, I have a little friend mail. You know, I could save it for later, but I'm dying to know what it is. So it's from Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. So sweet. Cheryl Katz sent me some friend mail. I did kind of, I kind of sliced it open just to get a peek, um, but I didn't take it out. So let's open it all the way. She's so sweet to have sent me some stuff. So I got, oh, I should have opened it yesterday. A care package, a little bag of candy. Oh my word, candy. Look at all, look, we like candy, bit of honey, some uh, truffles it looks like. Oh, yum. Okay, well, thank you so much for that. I should have opened it because I would have enjoyed that in bed. Well, maybe not. I couldn't taste a thing. I couldn't smell a thing yesterday. So, oh, wow, is this pretty. Shawl and a cake. It's Lion Brand. Uh, Mantilla Pastel. It is a four weight. Oh, my God, that is beautiful. Oh, I need to go make something with it right away. It's not even coming across on camera as beautiful it is as, as it is in person. I can't even talk. Oh. Uh, Wow, this is beautiful yarn. Look at this. Oh, wow. This is Lion Brim. Shaw in a ball. Is this the fab one? No, I think this is just Shaw in a ball. But look, it's beautiful. Um, she did ask me what colors I liked in the Shaw in a ball, and I must have said I liked this color, Pastel Pixie, because it's gorgeous. It was so long ago, I don't even remember. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Um, she sent me some peppermint tea. You know, that would be delicious. Um, maybe I'll enjoy some of that in bed later because I am not feeling it today. Yeah. <clears throat> A page of stickers, novelty stickers. <laughs> oh God, it hurts to laugh. 
I wake up this tired. This salad tastes like I'd rather be fat. Oh my God, I need an extra day on the weekend. These are very cute, guys. Look how adorable. This I could add this to my uh, planner. Very cute. Oh, and then another uh, skein of that. Is it, oh, it's a different color. Oh, there are two different colors. This is Sean a ball fab. Is this one fab? It doesn't. No, this one is just regular Shaw in a ball. This one is Shaw in a ball fab. <gasps> That's a gorgeous color. Now y'all can't see it, but there is like this shimmery. Um, I don't even know what you call it. It's this one has like a silver shimmeriness to it. And this one, it's not. It's more of a pink shimmeriness. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, that is so beautiful. I need to make something. These are both four weights. A, a thin four weight, but um, oh my, this one's called Gossamers. Oh my God, I love it. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It, you know what? It came at just the right time because, you know, it's picking me up. I'm going to take my bag of candy and my peppermint tea and go back to bed when I finish this. Um, I'll have my computer. Oh, I love this color. Oh, I'll have my computer with me so um, I can do some work, do the editing on this film. But I'm going to skip right to Judge Jury and Journey today you know, for a few reasons. Um, one, I don't feel well. <laughs> and two, um, the jury is deliberating, so we need to get caught up. And like I said, I, I have tried to do that over the last day or so, but I'm just not feeling well. So look, not much notes got taken yesterday. Um, Oh my word. So the judge starts the day out yesterday with the jury instructions. Now I did go back and listen to portions of the, the defendant taking the stand cross examination and man, I, if those two could have come to blows, I mean, they, I have never heard such intense arguing between and I really want to watch it when I'm in my right mind because I can't believe I fell asleep during that because like as I'm drifting as my eyes are closing and I'm trying to listen to this I'm thinking what is going on like this defendant was really arguing with the prosecutor he's twitching he's acting nervous he's uh you know you don't understand I told you this already and you know didn't you listen when I told you that the first time and uh yeah but the prosecutor was just lit lighting into him I have to tell you though the prosecutor was probably in his glory because, like I said, defendants don't take the stand very often. And when you've got a police officer who's taking the stand in this kind of a case where he's charged with 67 counts of felonies, well, I'm going to have a field day with that. And this prosecutor did just that. He had a field day with it. And I don't, I don't really blame him. You just don't pass up opportunities like that. And man, they were like button heads. If you get a chance to watch it, it's entertaining at its best. Entertainment at its best. Look for the video that says prosecution uh, or something like prosecution cross-examination of the defendant. Something like that. It's worth the watch. So then we have closing arguments. Um... And I was really interesting in, 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 interested in how the defense ties all this together. So I guess it is their position that all the body cam footage was there. It just got deleted by this lieutenant um, who was in charge of deleting body cam footage. And, and he was trying to explain the attorney that, you know, not maliciously, not in attempt to frame my client, but because that was the routine at this police department. They would um, periodically uh, delete body cam footage as the server filled up, I guess. I don't know. So um, he's, he's saying that, you know, there was one traffic stop where you could hear the defendant say, let me turn my body cam 
off now and he presses a button on his body cam so clearly thinking his body cam is on it was not on um now i don't know if he did all that for show or if he really truly turned in all this body cam footage and it just got deleted i i don't know so that's what they want us to believe it was all there it just accidentally got deleted uh or inadvertently it was deleted sorry my chest hurts um so i just want to make sure i'm telling you everything i didn't even write down a lot of stuff yesterday okay i did tell you his version of the events and i could run with his version maybe if we could have found any some evidence that he was dispatched to this park that day where he found this box of drugs there's no evidence that he was ever dispatched to this park that day. And now Tussie is barking. Uh, what is she barking at today? Oh, somebody's walking his dog. Okay. So let's start with the judge giving... Oh, dear. The sinuses are starting. I gotta get... I gotta be quick. The judge uh, starts out by giving jury instructions. It was pages and pages and pages of jury instructions. Because he had to read the instructions for the offense for every single charge. What? Yeah. So, he is charged with 67 counts, felony counts. Charge number one is racketeering. That's where you um, are employed, you're... You're employed by an enterprise. So he's employed by the police. He was carrying out and he was participating in all these crimes, um, and which we, you know, so if they find him guilty of any one of the other 66 counts of crimes or any two of them, two or more of them, they can come back and find him guilty of the racketeering. And if he's doing it for some kind of gain on his part. And there's been testimony that he wanted to be in... <clears throat> Um, that he wanted to be in the narcotics section of the police department, that they, he would make more money, he would have more opportunity for overtime, there'd be more prestige. He wanted to be in there, and we think that was his motivation, you know. Um, so counts 2 through 13 are for official misconduct. Count 26 through 37 is for fabricating evidence. Counts 38 through 49 are for possession of controlled substances. Counts 50 through 60 are for possession of drug paraphernalia. And counts 61 through 67 are false imprisonment. So that is a lot for the jury to have to do. And so then the judge, when he finishes the jury instructions, he gets up in front of the jury. Now this jury, I don't know if I've mentioned this, they've rearranged this courtroom because of COVID. And even before anything gets started yesterday, the judge announces that one of the bailiffs in their courthouse has tested positive for COVID. He said it's not uh, it's not any of the two bailiffs that, the, that are participating in this trial, but there is a bailiff in the court. So, you know, guys, COVID is still out there, unfortunately. So they rearranged this courtroom for uh, the COVID. The jury is sitting where you would normally see an audience sitting. Like you'd have the defense and the prosecution tables and then behind them would be rows of seating like pews. Uh, and that's where the audience for a trial would be sitting. Well, instead of having an audience, we have jurors sitting several feet apart throughout the the gallery here. I think they call it gallery. Uh, they're sitting in these pews. And, you know, I love this network, Long Crime Network on YouTube, uh, but they've made so many mistakes during the filming of this trial. They have shown this juror, jury many times I'm sure it was inadvertent, but I pretty much know what all these jurors look like, which uh, I'm sure they did not mean to do. And, and then um, during some portion of the prosecution's case in chief, they would put up arrest reports up on the TV so you could see that 
the person on the stand had actually been placed in jail, incarcerated. But on that report, it would show their social security number very clearly for all to see. And that was done several times. So I think that was two mistakes to that filming company. Um, not good. The jurors, jurors should never be shown to the public. Um, not in such a massive way. I mean, anybody has a right to go view a trial. And if you go view a trial, um, you're going to see the jurors. But um, on, in this kind of a case, I, I just don't think it was it was a good thing. <laughs> and, um, and to so, show their social security numbers is really bad. I mean, they're all going to go have to go change their social security numbers now. Um, so he gets up. The judge gets up and he stands in front of um, the jury where they're in the pews and, you know, like he's going to give a sermon and he's holding up the verdict form and he's reading every single count of the verdict, all 67 counts. So this is why I think, you know, the jury didn't get, uh, this did not go to the jury until 340, 345-ish p.m. yesterday afternoon. They are in Florida, in Tallahassee, Florida. They are on Eastern time, so it was 3.40 their time. And uh, we know that by the evening they were probably sent home to show up again first thing this morning. Um, but, you know, the first thing they have to do is elect a four-person, and then once they have the four-person elected, they have to go through each and every one of those counts. And uh, that's going to be a job. And both the prosecutor and the defense attorney suggested ways that they could do that. And the prosecutor was really masterful. I, he said, here's, here's what I suggest. You know, each, you will be getting evidence. And each separate traffic stop is in a, a, a folder. And everything associated with that traffic stop will be in that folder. So you could go through them, you know, one traffic stop at a time. So, so we are on verdict watch today. Um, again, if you're watching this um, trial uh, on your own and you see things differently than I did, well, please forgive me because one, I feel like crap. And uh, number two, you know, that's why we have a, a many people on the jury because sometimes we all see things differently or in a different light. Um, this is a panel of six jurors. They did not need 12. 12 is for a, uh, a capital case like murder, things like that. Uh, Actually, they had nine um, at the point that they went to back to deliberate. Three were sent home. They were the alternates. So they were excused and sent home. So only six jurors went back to conduct their deliberation in this case. So that is where we're at. I'm going to uh, say adieu. <laughs> uh, I will see you tomorrow in the morning show. I hope I am feeling much better. I'm just going to use today to kind of rest, work from my bed. Um, see if I can recover from whatever this thing was yesterday. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and uh, I will, if I, like I said, if the verdict does happen to come across today, I will come back to you live for the reading of the verdict, which, like I said, is going to be lengthy because they will have to read all 67 charges and whether he is guilty or not guilty on each one of those charges. So, um, take care. Um, please leave me a comment. I love your comments. I read each and every one of them. I'm going to take my yarn and my candy and um, I'll be in my bed. Bye, everybody. Take care. I love you.